Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be settling the debate of which game is better. Arcane Odyssey versus Deep Woken. So I've seen a lot of people compare these two games, even though I think they're not really comparable. But in this video, I'm just going to see which one is more worth it to play and which one's more worth it to progress into. So let's get right into this video. I'm going to be seeing which game is better based on three different categories. Progression, PvP, and the lore and the story. I'm going to do it game by game and then give each game a rating out of 10. Whoever has the most points at the end wins. I'm going to try I'm gonna try to be as unbiased as possible because as you guys know, I do post Arcane Odyssey content. But yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so for the Arcane Odyssey progression, it is linear which means that there is only one path that every single player will experience. There are many changes like sparing Elias, but those changes don't really affect the story in any big way. The only way that sparing Elias actually does give a change to the game is that the bosses hate you less like Calvis and Argos. And also in that one scene with General Argos, he doesn't say where's Elias, Elias is actually in the room there right there with him. Also, it does give you the merciful versus, versus the fearless trait. And uh, basically these traits just ma make your ability get renowned I guess a little bit more. But yeah, that's really the only change that you could really do in the story. But even though the story is linear, it is still a pretty fun story. And you could still also interpret it and experience it in many different ways depending on your class. When I played on my mage versus when I played on my conjurer, I had really different experiences when I fought bosses like Elias and Calvis. So yeah, I would really recommend playing this game multiple times just to see how fun the story really is. So for Arcane Odyssey, the progression, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. I feel like if it wasn't linear, the game would be way better, but the game is still being developed and only came out about a month ago, and hopefully we see some new progression updates and a new update that should be coming out later, later this week. Next, we're going to talk about Arcane Odyssey PvP. The PvP in this game is pretty weird, I'm not going to lie. It is basically just using magic and spamming M1s. So in my opinion, the Deep Oaken PvP is better, but this PvP is still decent and it has a lot of potential. 2v2s and team battles will be way more fun and way more diverse when classes like the Warden come out. But so far, we only have about 3 or 4 classes that are really viable in PvP, which are Warlock, Warrior, Conjurer, and Mage. But for now, the PvP in this game is pretty stale, and I recommend just sticking to grinding for PvE until the PvP improves and we can actually go ahead and grind out PvP. There isn't really much to say about PvP in this game, it's really just basic PvP that you'd find in any MMORPG. But this game really isn't meant for PvP like Deep Oaken is, so for that I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Next we're going to talk about the lore. And in my opinion, Arcane Odyssey has one of the best lores of any Roblox game of all time. If you guys look at videos by YouTubers like Territory, you will see how the lore is really expanding, and I really want to make lore videos myself. Almost every single character in the story, even the side characters that you can barely even talk to, have amazing lore and have an amazing story around them, which is why I think that the potential for this game is is limitless. Some of my favorite lore are characters like Iris and Morden. Also, the, the playable character in the game, which is you, you also have a lore in this game. So in my opinion, the lore for this game is unmatched. That's why for that, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 lore. PvP is the only thing that's holding this game back. The controls and everything are amazing. And uh, I really just like enjoy the game in general. And in total, it got an 8.5, and then a 6, and then a 10. So if you tell it all that up, Arcane Odyssey got a 24.5. Next, we're going to look at Deep Oaken and the three categories that we went over with Arcane Odyssey. Obviously, Deep Oaken has been out for over a year, so it has more progression and more things in the game, which is why I think Arcane Odyssey gets a little bit more biased than the other game, because Arcane Odyssey has no updates released. Literally, only the release of the game has come out. The progression in Deep Oaken is not linear, it actually has multiple strings. You could literally choose between way different options than Arcane Odyssey. And also, this also expands the lore, so it does get bonus points for that. But the story in Deep Oaken is not linear, and in my opinion, it has a better progression than Arcane Odyssey. I don't mind the progression of Arcane Odyssey being linear, but there are major gaps in the story. Like, why do I have to go from level 69 to level 93? Why can't there be a story or a side side story somewhere in the middle? But the story feels really incomplete in Arcane Odyssey, which is why I got 1.5 points off. I would have given it more than that. I would have probably given it a 7 if the game was out for more than 5 months. But it's only been out for a month, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a chance. I might make an updated video later on this year if this is not fixed. That's the main thing I had about Arcane Odyssey, and Deep Oaken just solves all those problems. There's multiple lines and storylines you can go through, and the story just feels really complete in Deep Oaken. 
So that's why in my opinion, Depot can get a 9 out of 10 on progression. Next, let's go ahead and look at PvP. In my opinion, Deep Oaken's PvP is miles ahead of Arcane Odyssey. The PvP is way more diverse, there's more classes, there's just more stuff that you could do in the PvP in Deep Oaken. That's why when I hop on Deep Oaken, the only thing that I do is I play PvP. I don't really like to grind stuff out like that. I usually just trade for them or I usually just like, yeah, trade for them or like pay for them. But yeah, I literally only like to do PvP on Deep Oaken. It is more of a PvP game than a story and grinding game in my opinion, which I actually like. But other times I kind of just want to chill and grind out bosses, which is why I play Arcane Odyssey as well. In my opinion, the PvP on Deep Oaken gets a 9 out of 10. Next, we're going to look at the lore of Deep Oaken. In my opinion, Deep Oaken also has one of the best lores in all of Roblox or any game in general. But in my opinion, the lore of Arcane Odyssey is just more complete and has more depth than Deep Oaken. The lore is really interesting, but not as much characters have lore. Arcane Odyssey has way less characters, and I think more characters have lore in Arcane Odyssey than Deep Oaken. Any side character will have lore, but in Deep Oaken, only the main characters have lore. So for that, the lore on Deep Oaken is going to get a 6.5 out of 10. In my opinion, right now, the game I'm enjoying more is Arcane Odyssey. Especially when the new update comes out, I'm definitely going to be having at least 100 hours on the game by then. But yeah, Arcane Odyssey is just a more enjoyable game right now. For PvP, I do prefer Deep Oaken by a lot, but for the lore and the progression and the story and everything like that, I do prefer Arcane Odyssey. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.